Hello. Today I want to go over one of the builds I've been using, God, for almost a year. So, no build in the game is going to make you a better player. There's builds that are designed to give you a ton more damage, but you won't be as tanky. Uh, some might even make you get one shot. Um, then there's other builds that will allow you to become more tankier. This build is kind of a mix between the two. Um, there's lots of other builds you can have in the game, like support builds and things um, that some people use for group play and whatnot, um, and bleed builds and things. But this is basically, I'll have a link in the description below to um, the Dauntless Builder link if you wanted to go look at it that way as well. But basically what we've got is we've got Iceborne and Tough. So Iceborne, at a plus six value, whenever you're under 50% health, uh, you gain 30% decreased damage. So 30% increased damage resistance, right? That's cool. And then while Iceborne is active, you gain 8% lifesteal that cannot go beyond 50% health. So as long as you're below 50% health, every time you're hitting, you're getting 8% of that, that damage back as health. Not 8% of your health, but 8% of the damage. So some of the big hard-hitting weapons can, can instantly fill your health back up to half. It's ridiculous. So all we're getting here is we're looking at getting um, the damage reduction. So if we get below 50%, we get reduced damage. And then you combine that with tough, you get 500 extra health. So it's going to take longer to get down to half. And then also when you're below half, that 50% life bar is much bigger. Well, in theory, 250 more HP bigger than the old 50% life bar was. The other thing is you get 50% increased healing from all sources. That ties to your Iceborne. Yes, you get lots of healing. I basically never use health pots or Aether Vents. So those are the two defensive perks that we run. And then I've got three offensive perks, but they're situational. Uh, but all this stuff's guaranteed to happen throughout the fight, so they do all proc. Um, and none of them are penalizing like things um, similar to Predator or Berserker, which give you an insane amount of damage. But Berserker takes away health, so you die faster. Um, and then at harder modes, if you're not running anything else than just Berserker, uh, you can easily get one shot, especially if you're running Berserker in a low life build. A low life build means you're incorporating the 50% less. There's a bunch of perks that will buff you when you're below 50%. So if you're running low life builds and you throw Berserker in there, you can get one shot. Easy. Easy. Um, if you're not combining tough in there. But if you're running massive amounts of damage, then you're kind of going for the glass cannon and you don't want any defensive perks. You want all damage perks. Uh, but those are for the players that have been playing for a long time uh, that can go flawless. Um, or they're running in a group and they can get healed and they've got self-revives and stuff like that. Um, or they're going to run a bulwark portion po portion, potion for uh, reduced damage. Uh, so there's lots of things you can do. But this is, I'm a live streamer, if you didn't already know. And when I'm running with random people um, or I'm just busy talking to chat or I'm just doing lots of things. Or if I'm doing YouTube videos uh, and things are rendering, I just want to get in and I'm watching something else on the, on the other monitor and I just want to grind. Um, this is the build that I run. So Rage Hunter, you get 40% extra damage when the Behemoth gets angry and turns red. He's enraged. Um, that will always happen at least once within a fight. So combine that with that extra power. Um, when you're breaking parts, this is a very small window. I know a lot of people were trying to tell me, and I can make a test video on this in Myth Busted if, you, if, if need be, but... Everybody's like, you get three, four seconds of this after you break apart. No, you don't. You get like half a second. Look at your damage numbers. Uh, but anyways, so 60% damage when staggered behemoths. So when you interrupt, you stagger, you knock them back. Um, anytime they stop what they're doing, and even if they stumble for a split second, you get a damage buff. So when you break apart, they stop and stumble. You're getting that damage, um, that 60% increased damage during that moment. So for slower, hard-hitting weapons... It's a little, the window isn't there as easily when you break something, especially like with an axe if you're trying to charge back up or he stumbles and you have to run over to him. Uh, but quick weapons and guns and stuff, you definitely get that bonus um, for a little bit longer just because it's it's easier to attack him after you break apart. Ideally, you get the most damage after you knock him unconscious um, or if you interrupt him, if you boop him, if you will. Then uh, as he's laying on his backside, uh, 
go ham. Go ham. Uh, Aether Hunter is, um, if you're fighting, here's, here's a tidbit for you new players. Uh, any neutral behemoth will not Aether charge. It will not go into Aether state. So this is wasted on any uh, neutral behemoths. But, for instance, if you're fighting Nezaga, Nezaga, for a lot of the fight, will be enraged and Aether charged at the same time. So that's 50 plus 40. And then if you break something or knock them over or knock them unconscious, which is kind of hard on Nezaga, but still, overpower kicks in. All of that damage. So these are all situationals. Uh, but this is what I run for all my hero pluses. This is if I'm not really paying attention, not wanting to go sweaty, balls to the wall. I don't even really run potions. You can if you want. You can run defensive pylons if you're, if you're, if you're still new and you're trying to do the harder content. This is a lifesaver build, I promise you. Um, and there's really nothing hard about it. You should already have your Ganasher stuff leveled up, especially if you listen to my tips and tricks videos. Uh, and then Skarn, that's just one piece, and you've gotten that way early on anyways. Level that up. And then Valamore's uh, Greaves, you get, you start to see Valamore um, in, what, Heroic? Yeah, there's no Dire version. So he's a little more late game. But anyways, just one of his. Um, he's not a bad fight. It's, not a, it's an annoying fight, but it's not a hard fight, uh, especially if you're doing it in a group. But, so... That's all you need. Boom, 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 boom. And then fit your cells in accordingly. One other side note I didn't touch on. Um, this only works with Hellion weapons. And, but it'll work with all of them. So whatever your weapon of choice is, it doesn't matter. Um, you could run sword, hammer, again, any weapon. Combine it with these. Lantern is up to you. Uh, I changed my lantern quite a bit based on what I'm trying to do. Um, Pangar's Shrine is still equipped from just a... You can't see it, but Pangar's Shrine... From a trial previously. I typically run uh, Drask. Drask for everything. And then I mix it around. I have been running a lot of broadside lately. But it doesn't matter about the build. It's just what preference on what you really want. They all give you the utility perk slot. Which is what you need. And on that note. Conduit. Uh, you could swap this out for Aetheric Attunement. Um, I still like Conduit just for the attack speed buff. It's not what it used to be. But still. Still, it also benefits your team. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. All right, here we go. We got a hero, Kimberman. FYI, for you new players, you can boop with the chain blades very easily. He's going to come at me. Boom. Dash light attack. So I've got all the overpower buff right now because he's on his back. it again. Still overpower is active. Knocked him out again. Overpower is active. He's enraged. Whoop! Just pay attention. I've got the 40% enraged, but I gotta get off this cliff. So that was just a basic light attack. It still boops, but it's trade, usually. Broke him. Split second of overpower, plus the enrage. His enrage is over. Oh, I need to get below 50% so you can see the healing. I haven't even gotten down to my Iceborne yet. There we go. Now he's unconscious again. He let him hit me. Hit me! There we go. Jeez, that was wonky. All right, now he's going to do this. Nope, he's coming. Oh, what? The filth? All right. Look at that healing instantly. Not even a full combo. Went up from a quarter to half health.
Shouldn't it stop at five? Is it not going to give me two health? That's funny. Should be at 800, but it's not going up past 798. Stop it. What? That was supposed to be a backflip. Knock him out. Boom. And I think we'll finish him off right here. There you go. Now, I didn't do a really good job at showing how effective it was defensively. Um, I did let myself get hit a few times. You could look at that. That was heroic. And uh, it wasn't chunking me very much at all. And then I was able to go from a quarter health back up to half health in not even a full four-hit combo. So, obviously, that'll be different with different weapons based on the damage output. And also... It's a four minute. It's not a sub three. If you want to do equipped potions, damage potions and things like that and speed potions, um, I do get a lot of sub threes with this build. I mean, they're like 259, 250s too. They're nothing. They're nothing really super brag worthy, um, but they are sub threes. You can do it on a lot of the fights. Not all of them, but another factor on sub threes, FYI, is the timer starts when you get in the match. A lot of people think it's when you get in the fight. That was not a four-minute fight with Ember Pain. <laughs> anyway, again, link will be in the description below to this build. It works with all Hellion weapons. It's a very easy build to make. Um, if you're having problems with cells and you don't have a bunch of the plus three cells you need, you you should be using the middleman daily. Um, within within a couple weeks, you'll have everything you need. A couple weeks, you'll have more than enough. And then all of these potions and stuff that you potions, the the cells that you bring over here, the the pots and you smash them are, are completely worthless after about a month. You just there, you, you'll have everything. Is what I'm saying. I'll throw this back up on stream or on screen. And as a friendly reminder, I stream daily over on Twitch at twitchtv slash I'm in between the late night hours of 8 p.m. to about 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's West Coast United States. You can follow me on Twitter at SlyGummy for news, updates, goofiness. We have a Discord link, which will be in the description below, along with a bunch of other Dauntless videos. I've got a ton of guides. Um, I have a middleman guide if you're brand new and you don't even know what that is or how to upgrade your cells from plus ones to plus twos to plus threes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we got the new hunt pass like in two days. The, the what is it, like the, the punk pass, the neon punks, whatever. I don't know. It looks cool. Um, I saw they put out an article today. I haven't looked at it yet, but it looks like there's going to have, instead of just the standard way to progress, they have other things. It looks cool. I don't know. I have no idea. I got to go look at the article. Anyways, I'm rambling. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.